Hello. I'm joined today by Dr Kalmara Pocock, a lecturer in anthropology and Australian Indigenous Studies at the University of Southern Queensland. In this module we're examining tourism and a number of elements around tourism including the impact of tourism on societies, cultures and economies but also how important tourism is for a number of states within the Asia Pacific region. So Kamara, you've conducted research on tourism in the Whitsunday area within Australia and also the Great Barrier Reef. Just wondering if you could talk a little bit about your research and also some of the impacts you've found tourism has on people and places, uh, for instance. Thank you. Um, yeah, my research has been on the Great Barrier Reef, looking at its entirety and then how tourism has impacted on that over time and also particularly how people's experiences of the Great Barrier Reef have changed over time as technology and infrastructure have changed at the Great Barrier Reef. So in the earliest period of Great Barrier Reef was very much about accompanying scientists on expeditions and camping on islands and had a very low-key kind of experience. So people actually understood the environment, were very much part of the discovery of the environment and it was a very much more simple experience yeah. in some ways but also a much longer experience. And subsequently as resorts have been built and conservation measures have been brought in, those experiences have changed um, enormously. So some of the things that I was very interested in were the ways in which resorts in particular became shaped as part of the Pacific. So even though it's an Australian location and we think of those early holidays as characterised by the sounds of casuarinas or she-oaks um, and very sort of informal Australian typical bush holiday, yeah. the later experience is very much more of luxury resorts, hula girls with oh. grass skirts, resorts that are all air-conditioned, um, five-star oh. accommodation and those sort of things. So people become quite divorced from the environment. So even though the Great Barrier Reef is managed as a whole for its environmental values, oh. most tourists actually experience not that at all. They experience landscape gardens with hibiscus and lawns and things like that. So one of the the other follow-on projects that I've been interested in is the way in which Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, but particularly Aboriginal people, have been excluded from those ways of representing the Great Barrier Reef over time as the idea of the Hula Girl, which is much more of a Pacific Island notion. Um, so some, in some instances, Aboriginal women were asked to perform those roles, but their Aboriginality was sort of suppressed. Right. Um, so that's well, that's amazing. quite fascinating. Mm. So that it's really supplanted an a, um, artificial cultural position within Australia then. So they've imported a culture to try and have a cultural element within that Great Barrier Reef tourism. Is that, is that something that has happened? Very much so, and I think we can look at tourism broadly across the world as one of the issues about tourism is the way in which it homogenises cultures and becomes a tourism culture. So tourism has many opportunities for local communities mm -hmm. and, and small countries, as you were saying, but it also has a number of risks, and that's losing what is particular to places and also seeing the benefits of it actually going not to those countries but to external, externally owned and operated businesses. So at the Great Barrier Reef what you see is an importation and Australia's economies are probably slightly less vulnerable than some smaller nations so we've been able to absorb that mm -hmm. and the Great Barrier Reef has created this other kind of place within Australia which gives Australians somewhere else to go. Right. Um, yeah. They can pretend they're part of the Pacific Islands in a more typical sense, but we can also see that as being a pattern right across the Pacific as well. Right. Well, that's really quite fascinating, actually, and, and something I think is very much um, the message of Whit Sundays uh, as well in terms of the tourism. A lot of people feel that, well, if I go to the Whit Sundays, I have the experience of going to the Pacific with, with, without leaving Australia. Yes. So that's very interesting. So with those um, impacts of tourism, um, what are some of the more pressing impacts, do you think, uh, including environmental impacts? Is there a, is there a problem with uh, environmental um, impacts associated with tourism in the Great Bar Barrier Reef? There are, and there's, there always are with any kind of development. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of... Ecotourism is a very mm -hmm. strong part of, of some of the resorts, but there's some very interesting research that people have done on the myths of ecotourism because even though 
we like to think of them as sustainable ways somewhere that energy is still coming from and somewhere our waste goes to and there's always mm -hmm. things that need to manage. So I think ecotourism is a really interesting research area but obviously it's also a desirable way to minimise impacts and I think we've seen a lot of changes at the Great Barrier Reef. Part of those changes have actually changed the way in which people understand the reef mm -hmm. and not always for the better but obviously it has been brought benefits to the the, the marine environment. For instance, one of the early accounts that I was told about was that when boats went out to the outer reef for day tours, the housekeepers could smell the boats before they could see them returning because of the number of corals and shells on board oh, that right. people had collected. So obviously those impacts would be staggering now yeah. with the you know more than a million visitors who go to the region every year. Yeah. So at the Great Barrier Reef it tends to be focusing people in very small areas so the reef you know, is more than 2,000 kilometers long mm -hmm. but only 2% of the entire region is used for tourism right. so it's concentrating that tourism in there which also then feeds into that issue of how are people experiencing the region and understanding it right. obviously tourism more broadly has huge impacts on places and yeah. that's why I'm saying it's sold as a benefit for many places and developing nations in particular and that always has to be balanced with the inherent risks and some of that is it will bring in good infrastructure and jobs and a number of things like that and mm -hmm. seen as good for economies <coughs> but the risks are that those same infrastructures can exclude people from areas those jobs can exclude other local communities mm -hmm. jobs may not go to locals you yeah. get huge divisions in how much money certain people are earning and not other people. Right. And so there's a range of, of things always. I think one of the interesting things is to look at the positives and the negatives mm -hmm. of tourism in each place. Right. Oh, well, that's fascinating. And thank you for coming and joining us today and talking about this. I, I'm sure that you've given the students a lot to think about as they go and explore tourism in this module. Uh, you might want to think about ecotourism. Is it really uh, the... Um, environmentally friendly way of conducting tourism. Okay, so thank you very much and I'll talk to you again next week. Thank you. So thanks a lot for that.